cloud. Great. Well, welcome everyone to the May meeting of the Freelance SPJ Freelance Community Board. It's Wednesday, May 11th. It's 4.05 p.m. East Coast time. And we're going to call the meeting to order because we have um, plenty of a quorum. So um, Ginny, thank you for sending the April minutes. Um, has everybody- I think they went to a, everybody. What's that? I think they went to all of us. I, yeah, I think so. And I was just thanking Ginny for sending them and asking if anybody had any comments on them. Um, I will confess that I was super busy the last couple of weeks throwing a bridal shower, hosting a bridal shower um, for one of my best friends, after which I promptly um, contracted COVID. Oh. And I was <laughs> totally out for like a week or more. So I'm still playing a little bit of catch up because um, I, I, was, I was like dead to the world for a week. Um, so, but uh, I feel like I saw some emails go through prior to today with meeting minutes were those from april or from march those were from march and i did make the there was a one suggestion hazel made and i fixed that and then um ruth had some like kind, kind of copy edits and i fixed those and loaded the revised version on the board meeting minutes folder awesome and i haven't had time to look carefully at the april ones yet and i can't get to it until tomorrow afternoon Okay. Yeah, I just sent those over like, uh, hey, I don't know, within an hour. Or so yeah, I didn't, I didn't think anybody get to them by before the meeting. Oh, okay. good. <laughs> but I just, they were done. So I thought I wanted to send them over for Thank anybody you. to have. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you. Um, and I do have a, a like a one document where I'm trying to keep a repository of agendas and minutes so I can add the links to that. Um, to that document and that's linked from the freelance community hub on the SPJ website. So um, I will work Thanks. on to that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for doing it. It's really helpful. Um, and I do not particularly have an agenda for today. So famous last words, but maybe this will be a quick meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's see, as far as like admin stuff goes, I will just say that um, the there are two town meetings, but sort of like town hall style meetings coming up um, to open to all SPJ members to discuss the um, recommendations of the delegate task force. So those are May 17th, which would be what, a Tuesday um, at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And I got a, Hillary, I got a Facebook request from um, Adam about wanting to chat, which I assume is about this whole delegate thing. And since I honestly can't say I understand most of it, I've just ignored the message. Should I? Get, I mean, I don't know why he needs to talk to me about it. Any any idea? Okay, I think that he's just been trying to touch base with all of the various constituents. So okay. I, I I can't imagine that it's anything pressing. Um, but I will um, resist the temptation to triangulate and just say that. Like, <laughs> If you want to find out if he has anything specific to talk to you about, then you should respond and find out. And if he feels like it's really pressing, then and he'll, he'll call again. Yeah, All right, that'll call. work. That'll um, work. Thank I you. Do, I did have a conversation with him, so I do know that he has been reaching out to lots of constituents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so Hazel, I see your hand up. I do just want to say, just to like complete this one thread, uh, um, I believe that the, ta the town hall meetings are scheduled for May 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern and June 1st at 10 p.m. Eastern, which of course is designed to give the West Coasters an opportunity to contribute um, 
outside of the workday. Um, and I do encourage folks to attend those town halls, both to learn more about the situation and the recommendations and the dissent, um, and also to share your thoughts and questions about it. Um, Hazel, what would you like? Um, I, I just, I believe that uh, Jenny has already spoken to Adam and I wondered if she would share um, some of what, what they discussed or I, maybe I shouldn't be calling you out <laughs> in public like this, Jenny, but I was just curious. Sure, so basically um, I asked him a couple of questions. He, um, you're right, Hazel. He just, I think is touching base with people and letting them know about the task force recommendations. Um, and I let him know that I am a member, well, he, I think he knew I was a member of the freelance community, but coming at it from that perspective, as well as the Cincinnati chapter. And there are several people on the Cincinnati board that um, oppose the recommendations as well. So we brought it up at our last meeting, which was last week. And I just basically kind of made everybody aware of, you know, the recommendations and the meetings coming up. And there was some opposition and I wasn't the only member on our board. Um, many of you know Higit Lamore, she's on our board. She's a past national president and uh, she had some concerns as well. So basically when I talked to Adam, I let him know that there were a few people that we hadn't made a board decision, but there were a few people that had concerns about the recommendation. So that's basically it. So yeah, I think he's just reaching out to people to let him know, because I kind of thought the same thing. I He just contacted me out of the blue and I kind of wasn't sure. I was like, what does he want to talk about? And I figured it was probably the, the task force recommendation. So I think he's just touching base and maybe getting people's feedback if they have you know, any to offer, but that's basically it. Okay, I'm, I'll try to be polite and just let him know that, maybe just ask him what he's interested in. And if he wants me to talk about the delegate thing, I'll just tell him I, I don't feel comfortable because I really am not sure what's going on. Sure. I feel dumb, but such is life. I did express that too, because I feel like we've been getting bits and pieces of information, like, that I had more of it. I kind of let the Cincy board know that too. Like I had gotten the most information from just because I was part of the freelance community and, you know, Stacy was on the delegate task force and that's where I had gotten the bulk of the information from. So I kind of let him know that like, I felt like, and I kind of said to my board too, I feel like we're getting bits and pieces of information. So um, I think the, maybe the latest couple of emails have been more comprehensive where they let people know about the meetings and so on. Um, I feel like throughout the process, we really weren't that informed. Thank you for, thank you for that. Um, and I'm glad to, I'm glad to hear that you feel like you've gotten information from the freelance community conversations about it at any rate. I'm sorry that you feel like otherwise it's come in bits and pieces. Um, um, but I have, yeah. Um, so that's good. That's good information to have. And yeah, hopefully the town halls will be opportunities to clear up lots of questions that remain. And then there's still plenty of time for people to have dialogue um, before the um, delegate meeting later this fall. So thank you. I think we all, I mean, I got contacted as well. I'm just like, I don't have time. <laughs> I really, I, it's just more, I, you not having the mental bandwidth, like where it's like, I can't deal with one more yeah. <laughs> thing. Um, I, I agree with Jetty that it's sort of what we've, I mean, most of what I've heard has been from Stacy reporting back from the meetings. Um, and that it's, I haven't really, you know, heard much from the whole, the process itself. Um, I sort of feel like it's, and 
correct me if, if you think I'm wrong. I sort of feel like it is, um, it, it's sort of like the Senate and the legislature where one represents population and one represents each person. And if you took away one, the rural areas are gonna get screwed because they're not gonna, it's going to be the cities that are controlling everything because that's a bulk of where the people are. Hmm. Um, so I sort of view it as a rural, urban um, issue and that if you you we keep hearing in journalism that like the flyover states need to be represented the flyover states need to be represented and this is basically taking away their representation so that's the way i view it <laughs> wait, 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 what would be taking away their representation going to so a single over. like going to like one vote per per, per person versus one vote like per area because your people are going to be in the cities mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, so, so having, having the, that delegate system allows for a little bit of balance. So maybe the voices that aren't heard as much are heard a little bit more in that system. Got it. Okay. That's kind of my big picture view of this. Cool, so. that's helpful. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions about the delegate task force or recommendations or system? Okay. Um, Susan, what's your cat's name? This is Spooky. Spooky. She look at because she's white and she was scared of everything when I got her. So, <laughs> and she always has this. She has this six sense of like oh there's a zoom call on i never go in your lap but there's a zoom call on mine is exactly the opposite she comes and looks at me and she looks up at the screen and then she saunters away like i'm not interested people <laughs> don't need to see how cute i am <laughs> um well thanks everybody for your um contributions to the conversation about the delicate task force meeting and I do hope that people can go to those um, I was thinking that it might be a good idea to just encourage participation um, if we include them in the listings in the newsletter Hazel do you think that would be doable do you want me to write up a blurb or do you want to write up a blurb I never want to write anything <laughs> Why I asked. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for offering. <laughs> okay. So he'll write blurb for newsletter. And um, when I do that, it's easy enough to just go into Facebook and create Facebook events. Um, so I can do that as well. And Facebook events. All right, cool. Um, so I am finally remembering to switch up the order of the departments and the order in which we review everybody's updates. So Ruth Toller Carter, I'm yeah. wondering if you have a resources update for us. I do not because I haven't gotten much of anything done in the last since we last talked. So that. Okay that gets us through a little more quickly <laughs> that's the only advantage and i apologize no that's okay is there anything that we can do to support you in your work well the only thing i'm the only thing that has me a little bit stymied is when i go to do to to check on the how-to guide for updates and i go to the online version which is the current one that people see now if they're looking for that resource it's what I've been doing is copying and pasting segments into Word and then looking for anything that needs to be updated that way. And I'm, that's kind of clunky. On the other hand, if I just, if I, if I get access to it in WordPress and make changes in WordPress, the changes would not be visible. You could see the new version, but you wouldn't see what I've changed. So if anybody knows of a better way to do that, tell me and I'll give it a try. Hazel? Yeah. Well, 
I have a question, Ruth, about your um, preference for WordPress. Um, it's not my it's not my preference. I think that's what it's in at the SPJ site, isn't it? No, no, it's not. No, oh. it doesn't exist in WordPress. No, absolutely not. It's in oh. HTML. It's raw HTML. So for me to have access to the, well, if SPJ would give me access to go into that directly, but I doubt they would. Um, so am I still doing this the best possible way by just copying it? What, what, no. what's a better way? The, my opinion, yeah. a better way is for us to get the guide, get you started moving the guide into another publishing program. Yeah, but who, who does that? Who would, who would handle that? I can help you work on it, but I'm not in favor of it being in WordPress. No, I, I, I don't care for WordPress at all. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, then that's something I misunderstood. I, th I thought you said um, that you thought WordPress would be best. No, she just- well, thought I, I thought that's what the now. SPJ site was in and WordPress is, I mean, it's reasonably easy to use, but if it's not currently in that platform, on that platform, using that platform, um, and there's another way for me to work on it, then that would be great. So there's not currently another way to work on it. We've um, kind of talked around this issue a couple times in the past and um, transitioning it to a different publication platform. Um, and my recollection is that you wanted to just focus on the content first before, you know, um, well, yeah, because it them. depends. It depends on whether the rest of you want to see what I suggest changing versus trust me to just make changes. I would and, like and to it, see. It. It's not that I don't trust you, but I would. I, I would like to see, and I would like yeah. to have input on the changes. Yeah. And if that's the case, I have no idea how to do that, given the way it exists currently, other than copy paste into Word, edit with track changes get everybody's input and then send the finished version to headquarters. And that seems very so I think that, labor I think intensive. The, I think the clunky thing about doing it in Word is an issue of version control because there can only be one master version. Whereas if- That I can organize, I'm not worried about that. But if, if there's a better way, then- so it's, it's one thing for you to organize it and be the clearinghouse for intaking everybody's comments but if we were to do it and I would just and and listen you're the person volunteering to do this so we can do it whatever way makes sense for you personally I think that Google Docs is a much better tool for collaboration because everybody can see everybody else's comments in <laughs> real time and there's not a problem of version control. I can go in and I can look at the real time version of the central document and I can see what Hazel wrote and what Susan wrote. And then if Susan goes to sleep after she sent the marked up version to you and wakes up in the morning and remembers, oh, there's that other thing that I you know, just realized I should add as a well, comment. I then she can I, go into the real time. Right, I, and I hate it. Google Docs, but if that's easiest for everybody else, we can use it. And Hazel, if that's what you were going to suggest, then I just need to know how to take what's currently up there as the current version mm -hmm. and move it into Google Docs. And I have no idea. Uh, can, can you and Hillary take time for a meeting? I think we should take this offline and, and really talk through um the barriers and what would make it easy and what and and figure out what is the right way yeah i i Don't can do, pick up this meeting yeah i can do a meeting this weekend and i can do monday of next week friday of next week okay um just before we take this offline 
Um, is there anybody else who has thoughts about how how they would like like to be able to contribute and review the changes in progress? No, I I'm, I'm I agree with you, Ruth. I despise Google Docs, but in this situation, <laughs> Good. in this situation, Hillary did show me that because um, we tried to use Word for something else and it was a hot mess. Because it also depends on whether or not you're paying for Word, which is the major thing. Most people aren't going to pay for a lot of people aren't going to pay for the premium stuff. So I have a, a version I can use. I can share all this cool stuff, which you probably have. But that's not available to most people unless they, they're paying for it. And Google Docs has something that's like, it's kind of like the, the blandest, most brokest way to do it, but it works <laughs> and it's available. Yeah. So even as I give Google Docs credit, I have to give it. So. And it's easy. Uh, why don't we? I'm going to send you and Hillary the dates that I'm available in the next couple of weeks and we'll go from there. Okay, right. and that'll be that that um that'll be particularly what we're going to be talking about on there is just trying to get it onto that trying to get some system going that will make it a little bit more uniform. Let's just just start, doing... start with process, yeah. Right. Okay. Just just for doing the edits. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then and then we'll talk about production later. I yeah. okay. Yeah. Just so I know I've been for that. Because I can look up stuff, maybe find some stuff that'll make it easier. For somebody that's not used to using Google Docs to use Google Docs. Because I have right. stuff saved for that. It's not that I haven't used it, guys. It's just that I don't like it. Oh, okay. That's just me. I can't help you with that. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> Heard. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruth. Um so actually I just realized uh hold up uh, one thing that I forgot to mention um, from the sort of admin update is that Ruth and Solomon and I are still working on the bylaws and we haven't met, but we need to make sure to meet um, this month so that we can get the draft bylaws to the board um, with two weeks in advance of the um, June board meeting. That's our proposed schedule. Okay. So let's try to hold ourselves accountable to that. Okay. okay. <laughs> Okay, gotta meet and draft. Okay, cool, thank you. Um, and Solomon, since you were just talking, let's go to program. Is there anything else for resources, Ruth? I think that's really the only thing that matters at the moment. Okay. Okie dokie. Okay, so I don't have much to add. We had talked about um, the, uh, the subject of multimedia journalism. And the idea was that maybe we could break that up into a couple of um, have a, a I keep using the, the, uh, the you're breaking up. Oh, I'm sorry. I think we had talked about using multimedia journalism as a a, a, a through line for the next couple of meetings. So maybe having one where we're discussing the aspects of multimedia journalism, and then having somebody from as a multimedia journalist speak to us because I think. That kind of goes to some of the things that we had talked about before, like introducing, like learning about how to do um, audio or learning how to introduce photos into your stuff or learning how to, you know, learning other skills that we need as journalists and then discussing the multimedia journalism. And I'm developing that, those two as we speak. Um, and I think that was about it. Mainly the discussion uh, was coming down to, you know, how multimedia journalism has been a, you know, a prominent, uh, part of modern journalism, but there are issues with it. One of the issues was the uh, stress that it puts on reporters, like the young lady that got hit by a car that everybody was talking about, working as a multimedia journalist, she got hit by a car because she was sent there by herself because she was doing everybody's job, right? And then there's a lot of, I have a couple of websites here that clipped about younger journalists starting out um, that are not trained as multimedia journalists but hired as multimedia journalists and expected to do that work for less money, right? And then more established journalists <clears throat> who are upset and get and complaining because they want to learn these new skill sets, but they want to do it properly. And then they get edged out because they don't, they aren't willing to work less or cheaper than newer journalists who are willing to just kind of don't really care because they're starting out. So they're, they're more likely to, to incorporate those mistakes as a learning lesson for younger journalists 
than all than journalists who are more established that want to kind of maybe branch out into something else and want to learn how to do it properly. That was part of that discussion. And then the other thing was the uh, whole idea of the one man band, which I discussed with actually a couple of um, photographers, because a lot of people are starting to incorporate uh, incorporate photography into their discussions and uh, into their workflow and then don't understand what photography is or how it works all the time. So then there's this aspect of uh, multimedia journalism, lowering the quality of journalism to a degree, which is something that a lot of um, colleges and, um, and, uh, and um, publications are discussing as well. So I'm gonna narrow that down and try and distill that into less than a paragraph and then break that up into two meetings. One where we discuss and one where we have multimedia journalists talk about some of those aspects of multimedia journalism and how to get started on that for people who want to cross over. I think one thing that is important to, to keep in that is um, how this applies to, to freelancing in particular. So whether it means you change, you know, like how do you set multimedia rates if you're um, if you're asked to do photos? Like how do you charge for like I one outlet I work for they charge like twenty five bucks a photo, which if I was a photographer would be Insane. horrendous. Yeah, but it's like well it's this extra thing that I do and I can make an, a, you know one hundred and fifty bucks extra for photos for the story you know. Um, so I think making sure that we have that freelance thread in there and not having it just be a general multimedia um, discussion, I think is important for our group. Okay, yeah, that was uh, most of the people that I had looked at and tried to discuss stuff with were freelance journalists. And one of the issues for them was that that's the way they get started is that's their edge. I can do this, I can do all six of these things. I do one of them right. well, right? So, and then, older uh, or more established journalists are who are also working as freelancers have to compete with someone that does six things not great they do two things very well and it makes their it makes them look less competitive that was one of the things that was discussed you know for freelance journalists it makes you look less competitive if you're not doing photos even though the photos that you're turning in are not as are not you know at the level that you think they should be to match your story and then the other aspect to, as far as freelance journalists is concerned for the discussion is that a lot of freelance journalists that are that are um, that are getting started now um, have more control when they control the artwork that accompanies their articles or have a little bit more control so they get to they get to um, because their first couple of, of jobs as a freelancer is their first thing on their resume and now they get a little bit more control over what's on their resume they get to hone their skills more than someone maybe 20 or 30 years ago, who, you know, they didn't push freelance. And then they decide that they liked accompanying their stuff with video or photos or audio. And now they kind of have to start over and don't have that skill set grow with them as they start. You know, so that's one of the positives and, and, and you know, and what they're discussing with um, freelancers. Also, the media rates was also something that was discussed. I'm a photographer, so most of the people I talk to about that were photographers. And like you were mentioning, as far as the discussion is concerned, most photographers, there's two problems with that from their point of view as far as being a freelancer. One, they it's kind of like making everyone uh, see, it's kind of like changing everyone's tastes. So if everyone gets only McDonald's, then when they get a home cooked meal, they don't, they don't realize how good that is. So you get multimedia journalists who turn in okay photography and it devalues other photojournalists who are competing with them because now it's, it's that tyranny of the now is not it's being off balance now because everyone can turn in a photo with their with the camera and now you have editors from their point of view from people I've discussed who are willing to lower the standard if they can get the more get the photos from someone and not pay them as much right and the other issue is for instance in California um, if I shoot video for a story now I have to be hired as an employee <laughs> because of AB5. So yeah. um, as a freelancer, um, these laws affect um, multimedia journalists because it makes it so you can't be truly multimedia. Um, 
And I've had editors who did not know this because I'm like, oh, I was going to shoot video, but if I shot video, you'd have to hire me as an employee. Um, and they didn't know about that loophole in the law. So anyway, no, I'm no, just saying, yeah, yeah. I think be sure to keep the, th the freelance thread in there. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, no, no. We, we, I, I did talk to them and did some research about that as well. I just don't want to go into too much detail, but yeah, as far as the freelance working, it, it changes. What are the rates? What do we? How do we learn how to? to ask for like I had that same issue you know so shopping around trying to sell something I had that same issue Hillary you're muted so that issue of like <clears throat> yeah that I I hear you Susan what you're saying about how to keep the conversation and the presentation and the offering like freelance focused and looking at this specifically from a freelance angle. Um, and I do think that um, it's so far from this conversation, to me, it sounds like the issue of um, how to know what to charge and also like how to know when you're ready to charge and sort of how to balance that um, the imperative that you have as your own business person to get as much business as you can and produce the best work that you can. And also, you know, sometimes good is enough and it doesn't have to be great. And so like how to balance that with, you know, the impact that it has on the rest of the industry and fellow freelance colleagues, <clears throat> who who do specialize in a particular medium um maybe those are some ideas about how we can focus it more specifically on freelance rather than just like how to expand your skills yeah that would be something like, that's why i was talking about maybe breaking that up into different things okay and then the other i'm sorry go ahead no no, no go ahead the other thing too as far as freelance journalists is concerned is that um online publications are exploding because of COVID. You know, people are, are starting their own smaller publications and using multimedia journalists to help them get them started. You know, especially in, um, for publications by people of color, because they don't, for them having multiple skills was an asset that you had to use to be able to get a job. And now with this complication like AB5 or AB5 and stuff like that, going and starting your own magazine or going and starting your own publication or starting your own news publication kind of solves that problem. So now you have a lot of smaller publications starting out as a way for freelancers to start looking at what do I do with all this material that I have for these stories that I can't get paid for, you know? So there's that. And then there's a, a lot of the, the editorial process is changing on, on those as far as freelancers are concerned as well. Because a lot of these smaller publications don't consider the stuff like you were talking about earlier, um, Susan. Like they're not they're not as um, experienced, and so they're not like considering those types of things, or they don't put that into what they're considering when they hire these people to do multimedia stories. Solomon, this all sounds like something you ought to be writing about for Quill. Uh, okay. Yeah, this sounds like something you should pitch to Lou Harry as a potential quill article or even column on occasional column. You're getting Hillary over there pushing. She she said you must be she must be sending you messages or something that sounds like an echo of something she said earlier. No, it's actually Ruth's own independent thought, but great minds <laughs> do think alike. Yes, and so, we do. Since you've heard it now from two brilliant colleagues. <laughs> Hmm. Maybe you'll do something with it. And I, I can tell you, um, I just pitched something to him yesterday and I got a very nice response. The current issue is in production. So he said anything that, that he would accept at the moment would go into an online version, not the print version. And I didn't even realize he was doing different versions. I thought the online version was just, you know, a PDF of what I get in the mail in print. So I learned something. Okay. 
Well, I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I guess. And I'll he pays through. even for the online version. He pays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah they said it pays. It pays a little less, but it does pay. Yeah. So, but um, and then as far as to, so that I'll uh, compartmentalize. I think that can break that up into three meetings, and that would give us a little bit of leeway so that we don't have to pull something out of the air so quickly, and that'll give us some topics. And then the other one was something that uh, we had talked about the last time with Susan about um, being safe. Uh, I think we talked about that a little bit, Susan, about being safe when you're uh, working in the field as a journalist. I don't remember. remember. Oh yeah, because uh, we were talking about, um, I think we talked about that when we first started our meetings in the beginning of the year, but it never got right. past. Uh, working about being safe when you're talking about being safe in the field as a person of color, as a woman, uh, as a journalist in general, that a lot and of- as a, And as a freelancer. And as a freelancer, when you don't have the protections of a large company, oftentimes, you know, um, to protect you. And I don't mean just physically, um, like knowing resources, like if you get arrested, knowing what your rights are, that kind of stuff. You know, you don't have ABC or KTLA or whatever to, that has a lawyer on call. You have to have that kind of information with you. So you know where that is. Solomon, are, are we talking about all of this as potential committee events for some yep. of our, our next yes. couple of events? Yes, okay. talking okay. about mainly for subject matter. So okay. I like to I do like to have a, a, a kind of a good idea of where the subject matter discussion would go. So that way we would be able to control it when it's an open discussion. Okay. So it would be great. So then go off track. Let it go off track here first. Well, we're talking about events. I would like to say that um, I think having a theme on the last sort of informal um, get together actually worked really well. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what we're talking about now, having these themes as going forward. And that's what we talked about earlier, Hillary, last week when we were talking about trying to set them up. So I'm trying to pull these out so that we have these different themes that are flexible. So they're not dependent upon someone showing up. We have something that we can all guide. And then that way we have those for those small discussion groups. You know, and then we have a list. You don't want to have just one. We will have a list of those that we can pull from. And that safety one, I think, is another good one that we can talk about as far as journalists are concerned. Because there's actually a couple of resources that I'm finding that a lot of um, uh, um, freelancers are not aware of that there are places that provide legal defense for journalists, you know, stuff like that. So, um, um, so, so there are a lot of good ideas here and we um, have talked about wanting to do, you know, monthly programs on the fourth Wednesday which would put us two weeks out, but we don't have a program nailed down for two weeks from now. So how, what are, what are we thinking is achievable if we were to decide that we wanted to just do something? Obviously it would be a low key event, maybe a themed networking event um, to buy us a little bit of time. I'm just wondering if, if this seems feasible to come up with and do the promotions for a themed networking event two weeks from today and also line up, like maybe have, you know, on the calendar for three months ahead, what the events are going to be. That would be yeah. great. Okay, so um, my thinking is that I will break up the uh, multimedia journalism sub subject and try and find, like I talked to you a little bit earlier, maybe try and find some multimedia journalists to actually freelancers to talk to and then have the open discussion. And then I think the most immediate one we could probably do because I have resources for that would be safety in the field. Mm -hmm. I think that can be our next one. And that gives us three, you know, that we can juggle. So wait, which one would be the one two weeks from today? Safety in the field. I think that one is the most general that we can discuss that all of us can handle. Any one of it's us. It's also very discuss. timely. And it's timely, yeah. And okay. it sets us up for the freelancing um, aspect of, of, uh, of the multimedia journalist because I wanted to talk about that young lady that we had by the car. So that kind of sets us up. It right. lines everything up. Okay, so we'll plan on that. Um, and then, 
as far as um, like one of the things that you're talking about for the May event, safety in the field as a freelancer is to make sure that we provide resources to the attendees. And so let's try to integrate that with the resources department and any updates to the on your own guide that we can mm -hmm. funnel from the program to the on your own guide. Okay, yeah, yeah. Then that makes it more tightly integrated and makes us, gives us a little bit more value. Yeah. To our users. Okay, yeah. So I will get that information together about the, um, uh, there are several different organizations that provide free advice. Um, and I also know of a few, there's the, um, there's ACOS Alliance, just off the top of my head, ACOS Alliance, ACOS stands for a culture of safety. And they've actually been really the pioneer in um, advocating for newsrooms to attend to the safety of their freelancers. Physical safety primarily is what they focus on. Um, FIRE, my former client, focuses on legal protections for freelancers, especially investigative freelancers specifically. Um, also, PEN America has a yeah. very very robust program on um, online safety and how to prevent and respond to harassment. And I do know that they have a lot of openness to expanding their offerings to be more specific to freelancers. Okay, and then the PP uh, uh, ACLA um, actually has some guides that I'll go back and look at about how to be safe in like, um, uh, turbulent environments. So they actually have a, a couple of booklets that they put together. I'll go back and look at that. I don't okay. think that they're photography specific in general. I think they're general use. So they might actually be very helpful. So to try to um, like aim for this logistical simplicity of this um, and with the understanding that uh, some members of the meeting deplore um, Google Docs, I wonder if we could start a Google Doc of resources um, and have that finalized, try to have it finalized in like a week or at the very least have it drafted in a week so that we have the resource so that we're just not assembling the resources like with minutes to spare before the event launches. Yeah, okay. So like not all of us are throwing each other's resources and then it'll keep us from having the same stuff too. Yeah. Okay, um, so just establish a Google Doc that we share. That would be great. And then um, basically all we'll just have you do is just drop in the, um, I mean, it's pretty cut and paste. You just need to drop in the um, website and a brief description underneath. I think that's enough. Yeah, and if everybody, if anybody has, if we could just make sure that everybody does like their download from their brain into the Google Doc by a week from today, then that will give me, Solomon, and Ruth a week to work with that information and get it into shape so that it's a presentable document at yep. the time of the event. Okay. Um, when I share something to the Google Docs from my personal calendar, who am I sharing it with uh, as far as the freelance, um, SBJ freelance? Uh, so it's all of the board, you should just share it with all of the board members, or you can also just log in to the, um, SPJ freelance community Google account. Okay. I'll just do that. Then that sounds easy. And you can just initiate it from there. And then that way it's automatically shared. Okay. I, if I have any problems logging on, I'll let it go. Okay. Okay. But I can't do it now. I'll have to do it after we get off the meeting. Yeah, no, of course. Of course. Okay. Cool, that would be great. And then also we talked about um, developing like a template for just sort of the, the promotions for all of our events. Is that something that you had a chance to work on? Uh, not much, no. I looked at some templates, but I haven't had a chance to pull them together. So maybe I can, by the end of the week, try to pull them together and get you some images. There'll be blanks, so they'll have placeholder images. Okay, and, and so, and to be clear, we don't just need like the- Poster, you need a, you need a write-up and a structure. Yeah, and like the timeline for like, 
X number of days out, we do this. X number of days okay. out from there, we do this. And this is who's responsible for each step that needs to be addressed. Okay. That's and, right. and, and you don't have, and if you can just get a start on that, just throw a hunk of clay on the wheel, then um, we can we can chip in and I can especially chip in and work on honing that promotional template so that we just don't have to keep reinventing the wheel each with each um, event. Okay, so it sounds like so far we do like having a theme that we talked about that we implemented it the last time. Sorry, I wasn't able to be there, but we implemented it and it worked well. It seemed like it was a good structure. So that yeah. Be, uh, my only question for what happened the last time was, um, were there enough people to break into groups or did we have, a, did we keep a one large group? How do we? We had, a, sorry, were the, were we, had a, we had a small overall group and we just used it as a, a guided discussion on networking. So like issues with networking and networking, like your, your, um, like your best networking tips, like people talked about different things that they do and it, it worked out. I mean, I would say like, what we had like eight people. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. even remember. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and having a guided discussion, I think worked really well, just having like even just two questions to start with, and then you could loop to other things by the end. But we really talked about networking the whole time. Okay. Um, and like issues good. that came up were like, you know, if you are in a rural area or, you know, you're, you're not in an area that is a city, um, Emma is, is in like out in Utah, Utah. she's not yeah. near the city. And so how, you know, um, and concern among some of those people about that when the pandemic goes away that worried that these online webinars and online networking will go away, which takes away their ability to network when they're not located in a city. Was there any um, product produced from that? Some, some collect some place to collect these these ideas or any of that like a whiteboard or any of that no document i don't think any of i know i didn't take notes and i don't remember anybody else mentioning that they did would that be no. what to incorporate in the future do we need that um i kind yeah, of it like, adds one more task to yeah, somebody and we've I already like got the, a lot the informalness of it and that if you come you get this information and you get this sense of community um i i mean i mean i guess we somebody could take notes and just like top three tips from you know and just keep it very simple um but then you have to decide who's going to do that i don't I think it's, it's better just to have the event and if something comes of it, great. And if something doesn't, then. Yeah, and, and for some of our events, it makes sense for whoever is the lead to have some kind of a hand. I mean, when I do presentations, I always have some kind of a handout either for the event or immediately afterward. And we could always at the beginning of a session, one of these, these less structured sessions, we could say, would anybody like to take notes and write up this event for the community newsletter? And then if somebody does, great. And if they don't, That's I great. think people who participate and get something out of it are going to take their own notes. And we might be able to get a volunteer just because that's kind of what journalists do. I think that's a but, great idea, Ruth. Yeah, but uh, but that way it doesn't put an additional task or dare I say burden on any one of our committee members because we're or community members because we're already all doing a lot. Yeah. Okay, and then um, my uh, final question as far as the events is concerned: uh, Are we getting new members coming to this? Did new members come to the last one? Like, what what is the how are we tracking who's new that's coming to our events? I, weren't there a few people who haven't been to, to at least yeah, to our meetings? There's, def there's definitely been new engagement. We don't have a system set up at the moment, um, partly because even just tracking our members is 
hard as hell. <laughs> is a lift. Um, <clears throat> but um, also we're putting some effort into the tracking of members and developing like more um, sort of structured membership initiatives in general. Um, so I think that that is a great thing to aim for Solomon, but we definitely do not have the data right now. I can say anecdotally that we definitely got um, new engagement. And I also have noticed even just from responding to people's requests to join the board meetings, that when we check the raw, like we check and make sure that everybody is an SPJ member. And then, um, oh, Ruth, I've just seen your, okay, Ruth Nesrola had to leave. Um, so anyway, thanks for being here, Ruth. Um, so we check to make sure that everybody who requests access to the board meetings is an SPJ member. And then what I've been doing lately, where Hazel and I have been doing lately is, Hazel checks to see if they're on the, the freelance community roster. And if they're not, then I've generally just been sharing them, sharing with them the login information and saying like, here's the login, we'd love to see you, thanks for your interest. By the way, technically these are only open to freelance community members and I don't see you on the roster. So follow these simple steps to make sure that you're officially registered. There's no extra dues. It's just a few clicks, blah, blah, blah. So I do that. And um, I can say again, anecdotally that I know we have gotten some new members or we've gotten people whose membership lapsed um, to like check that box again. And I believe that the same thing happened with one or two people who attended the resume um, event, but I, I, I don't have, I don't have it documented. Okay, um, so we're keeping the metric for success pretty broad then. I don't, I don't recall. Do we ask for people to register for these events? No, not that so, I remember. One, one thing we might want to consider, but making it as simple as possible is to ask people to register. And then we can tell who was there, who's new, who is or isn't a member of the community and so forth. Um, I can't think of any other way of doing it. So okay. we, we did that for the resumes um, because the resumes event was open to the public. That was one yeah. of the bigger events that we wanted right. to use as a recruiting tool. And so we did have registration for the resumes event. Um, can somebody remind me I feel like I just looked into this and I feel like I knew the answer, but I don't trust my memory on it. Can you require, yeah, you can require registration for a meeting, not just for a Zoom webinar, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. So um, but we haven't done it because I guess I guess there is a way to do it. We haven't done it because the like the networking events are the less formal ones that we're reserving for right. members only. And so what we've been doing is we've just been checking their membership status. And if but, they're a but, member, then issue them, then just respond to them personally and share the... But if, if you can check their membership status, then somewhere along the line, there's a record of who somebody is. There's some kind of process of knowing who participated. Now, now I'm thinking that what I did last time for the networking event is I did the same thing that I've been doing for the board meetings. Does that sound right, Hazel? I think I did the same thing and said, oh, thanks for your interest in the networking event. Technically, this is just, in, just available to freelance community members. I don't see you on the roster, but here's the login information and here's how to register. I don't think I knew you were doing that, but it, it, you know, um, usually if I'm in there and I know the person is a freelance community member, I just send them the uh, login information and say, looking forward to seeing you. Yeah. Okay. I do that both for the meetings and for, um, for the board meetings and also for the members only networking events. So um, 
So my thinking is that for the general open to the public larger ones, where we'll have like speakers that come and stuff like that, maybe the registration is the easiest way to go and the other stuff we just kind of um, leave it as it is. Yeah. I think that'll probably be the easiest way to go. Yeah. And that'll probably bring the newer people anyway is the larger ones that are open to the public. But another thing you can do in Zoom is set up one that's a members only event and save it as a template. And then it's very easy to use that template again. Am I wrong? But that's what I remember you can do. You can set, you can save a template. Yeah. So, I mean, that seems like an easy, easy way to, to not have to go through the rigmarole every, every time. Right. For sure. Well, okay. And this I don't is know. the intersection of membership and programming. This is yeah, a question that's about a lot of mine. Zoom. I don't know. So when I use Zoom for my college, after every meeting, I have a list of who was there. Do you know if regular Zoom does that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you or, can, um, if people, uh, oh, if it's you just can for see people. who's there. And let me see what the options are. That doesn't really give you any information or data about the person. Does no, it? it just gives yeah, you it does. Well, for me, it gives names. So I know exactly who was there. Yeah, if we yeah. have an email address, that's all we need. And, and you could just reference that with the SPJ. Exactly. OK. Yeah, I, I see everybody's name and photo, but I don't see email addresses. So right, one, thing we could do, one, one thing we could do is mm -hmm. ask people to put their name and email contact in the chat for each event. And then you can you can save the chat and add that to whatever list might be needed. Yes, yeah. that's a standard from the beginning. And that might be easier than, than asking people to register. Yeah, I think I think with the informal events, registering is like a hindrance because people are like, oh, like, oh. Yeah, I'm not doing anything right now. Not like, oh, now, uh, and I didn't register, so I'm not going to go. Like, um, I think it it keeps the door open a little bit wider. I would agree with that. So then the informal events, we won't do the registration. I think that's the consensus. Of what it sounds like as far as for my task. And then the formal events, we'll do that. And then we can make it a standard to ask for name and email address in the chat in the beginning. And I would say we ask people to put their names and email addresses in the chat, regardless of whether an event includes registration, just because um, better to have two records than one. Yes. So every event we would ask for a name and email in the chat. Yeah. In the beginning, and we give people a chance to go ahead and do that as part of the introduction. Okay. I think that's all I needed. I'm, I think I'm done with my section here. Well, on. I wanted to add something to programming because I, I was, um, and I don't even know if I've told Hillary this. Um, I was contacted last week by a, an SPJ member who wanted to know if I knew people who um, would be good for a panel on how to, um, how to deal with and protect vulnerable people when you're writing about them or when they are sources for your stories. And um, I remembered that several years ago, like maybe five years ago, um, I had started a, a proposal for EIJ. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember whether I put it in and it was rejected or I don't remember. But um, I, I sent that to her and put her in touch with the um, person who brought that subject to me when I was chair of the freelance community saying this is something that really needs to be done. And um, so I put the two of them together and then we suggested some other, um, some other speakers to make sure that there was, you know, that we covered uh, diversity of uh, different kinds of people. So I think, um, well, anyway, she got commitments um, from two other people plus 
the one that I introduced her to, who is Anne Hinga Klein. She is in Des Moines and she was actually on the team that won the Pulitzer last year um, that when the New York Times did this um, sweeping thing about COVID in jails. And she was the correspondent in Des Moines. Um, but she had done another story for the Des Moines Register earlier. And the person who um, contacted me and wanted to know about it was Sandy West. And I'm not sure where she is, but I've seen her around SPJ a little bit. I don't really know her. But I put the two of them together and got a really nice note back saying, thank you, thank you. That's great. And so what is the, um, I'm sorry, what is the outcome of their connecting? They put the proposal in by the May 8th deadline. Oh, they put it in as a proposal for EIJ. Yeah, for, for the conference. For, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, media. Yeah. And I think, you know, they stand a better chance of um, getting accepted with it if it isn't just freelancers. Um, but I know that there are two yeah. editors. Um, one of them is Jordan, um, uh, I forget her middle name, Begay from um, uh, Indian Country Today, I think. Um, uh -huh. Stacy, is that you on the phone? <laughs> yeah, that's Stacy. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. Her name is so Jordan. Um, Her name's Jordan. And I think that Sandy, the, Sandy, Sandy Graham might be. Right. Stacy, you're, you're breaking up. Yeah, I'm in the country. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'm at a track meet. Um, I just was going to say Sandy, Sandy West, I think, is also Sandy Graham, and she's in Texas. Ah, thank you. Um, anyway, yeah, no, I think that's right. She's in Houston, isn't she? I was going to ask yep. you if you knew her. Um, but anyway, um, so she contacted Jordan and Jordan said, yes, yes, you know, come to Washington and do two sessions, not just one. She was pretty happy about that. That's awesome. Um, so, and then who was the other person? I think it might have been um, um, Candace Montague, um, who is here in DC. And so she wouldn't need a, um, you know, she wouldn't need to travel or anything. Yeah. But anyway, so, and she's written some incredible stories um, here in Washington about, about vulnerable people. Um, a lot about um, unhoused people and um, some about, um, well, a fair amount about COVID. Um, anyway, so anyway, I just want to let you all know that there's one more proposal in there that probably would go into a freelance track if they take them all. That's wonderful. Yeah, it was fun. It just made me feel good. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And I just went into our archives and that was proposed in 2018. Yeah, yep. So that's really neat to see it come around again. Cool. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, let's see. I guess on that on that note, Hazel, do you want to move into um, membership report? Yeah, we didn't do the thing we said we would do at the last minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that in the minutes, um, but maybe we can do it now. I know. I know you were ill, Hillary, and yeah. I did not have knee surgery. So you what? I did not have knee surgery. That's and right. I'm here. Um, I sadly got the word that I can't have it with the surgeon I want to have it with at the hospital I want to have it with. Hmm. So um, it's put off and I'm seeing the surgeon I will have it with who did my other knee um, next week. So okay. um, membership. Um, we, I did finally get a, um, a roster uh, from Amy. She's still not able to give what I asked for, but it, she gave the same thing that I've gotten before and there were errors in the file. So it took me two days to, um, to really get a roster that I think is right. And it basically says we have 444 members now um, and that's net growth of nine, I believe from last month. 
So, um, wow, that's still- grown a lot. Huh? Pardon me? That's grown a lot, up to 440. 40? I feel like we were at 300. 44. Yeah, I feel like we were at 330 something, like only Two a few months ago. ago. Two months ago. Last month we had like 433 or something like that. Huh. And then the month before, 405 or something like that. I don't know. It's all numbers. But I made a lot of progress today on learning how to do, to clean up the file, so. Awesome, um, okay, let me know if I can help you at all with the spreadsheet stuff. Well, what- I am, I am making progress on reconciling the MailChimp subscription with the freelance roster. Good, um, so once you uh, feel that that's possible to do, I will give you um, a file for May. Okay. Um, and then, um, I don't know, do you think that we should be downloading the um, MailChimp subscribers every time? Every week, you mean? Uh, no, every month when we get a roster to do the comparison. I've only been updating that, that um, subscription list once a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, once a month. Right. Not yeah, not not every week. Right. Um I think let's just do the reconciliation and see where we're at and then just All sort right. of make an informed decision from there rather than trying to guess now what we should do. Good. That's okay. good. Yep. Thank you. So sorry I don't have more on that and I haven't done any of the things that I said I would do. That's all right. You've done other things. <laughs> it's all good. Um, okay. Um, advocacy. Susan, take it away. Nothing new to report. Okay. On the advocacy front. <laughs> okay. Um, I feel like we had talked about doing, you know, a special, and I still would really, God, I, there's so much I want to do. I this is one of them. I would love to do like that big event <clears throat> with, you know, the debate between Fight for Freelancers and Freelancers Union. I think that would just be so kick-ass and informative and provocative and um, exciting. I think it would be you're great. You're talking about us hosting that, that debate and advertising it and pushing it. As yeah, we're talk- we've talked about actually, rather than us just trying to host it ourselves, partnering with another organization and frankly, a higher profile organization um, to co-host it. Um, and we have not really nailed down who the ideal partner organization would be. So what it's 513 right now. Is there any other outstanding business that we need to discuss? Um, I was, um, I, this is Stacy. Sorry, I've been listening to everything as on this long drive. I was just gonna throw out there about the editor meet and greet. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it that, but I think we can put something together on one of our programming, like for the conference, obviously, um, in June, maybe, maybe that's the June one or July, where we, uh, from us, I'm sorry, is there something you need from us? No, well, no, a time slot, I guess, for to be one of the months. Stacy, are you saying a similar type of event, but different from what's going to be done at the conference yes yes uh yeah Hillary texted me and asked me if I was still going to do a spring editor meet and greet we had talked about that before and I am fully capable of doing that um so I can do that I have some people who are very interested but they can't because of location I could get those people those editors very yeah. easily I think for that for this and, and rather not necessarily necessarily meet and greet but it could be like what editors wish freelancers knew you know not so yeah. much like hey these three editors are looking to hire a thousand people you know what I mean so yeah. I can do that we can put that programming um Solomon's programming list I, I wouldn't do it too great yeah and I wouldn't do it too close to October because I'm going to be you know, I've got a commitment from eight editors to show up in October. Some of them are traveling from afar to come to this meeting. Um, so I've got eight firm commitments. 
I um, heard for that Jim panel. from you oh, before you were breaking up. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I think I could do it in June if it's the last Wednesday of the month. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep, it would be the last Wednesday. Yep. Uh, if it's not the 27th, I don't know what day that is. The 27th of June is a hold on is a Monday. Okay, perfect. Then no problem. And the fourth Wednesday of June, one, two, three, is the 22nd. Oh, it's the week before anyway. Perfect. Yep, that's fine. So that's the uh, so definitive we, date then that works. Yep. So if we want to do that or Solomon, if you'd rather do one of the other ones first, we could do that in July. I just think June or July at the latest, since we've got the big one in October. Yeah, fine. Um, would we need we would want to make that one a lot longer, right? Than our normal. I don't how long are the normal ones? About an hour, 45 minutes. Oh, I think that's fine. And I, I don't yeah, think for, yeah, because I think we're an hour. Just, we, sorry, they're the normally the networking events are an hour. I think we capped the resume event at an hour as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Stacy, I think Stacy's right. Even with a couple of people, if we're presenting it as here's what we want freelancers to know, here's what I wish freelancers would do. Yeah. They each yep. speak for 15 minutes and then we have 15 minutes of Q and A. Exactly. Yeah. So that and perfect. I think, and I think we just aim for, you know, three editors, yeah. four, four tops. You know, if we've got someone really great, like, oh, let's bring this person in. I know that the people from the state side are, they cover travel all over the United States so that anybody, that, that anybody in any city could be a potential freelancer for them. And they yeah. were very interested in this. They're just not located anywhere near DC. And they want to be involved once we come closer to one of their places where they do have people, they would like to come in the future. So I think they would be a shoe in and they'd be perfect because anybody could pitch to them. And they sent me a two or three page document that they wrote up specially for us to share with freelancers about what they, what they see freelancers doing wrong, what they like, what they don't want you to do, what they want you to do, that sort of thing. Okay, that sounds awesome. So we can get, I don't know if I can get a TV person, it's probably just gonna be print, but we can do it. So I can do that, so yes. I went, I went to one, I think it was by ASJA and it was during the pandemic. Um, and it was, she had that, I think they had three, but it was like someone I think was from the Fuller Project um, oh yeah, and then, and then there was also somebody from uh, like a military publication that publishes like features and stuff. As long as you oh, had like time. some sort of like military slant, um, and they went over like they would each go over like what sorts of stories they're looking for. Sometimes they had like an example that they could bring up on the screen to show people, mm -hmm. um, and and then. Um, I think, I believe they all included like what their rates are that their publications yep. pay. So you knew yep. like, okay, no, yep. that pays too low for me. Um, and how obviously how to get a hold of them, but it was helpful um, for them to describe the stories that they were looking for because they were publications that I had never thought of looking at. So Right. Yeah, and I think we've got several of those. Um, so I reached out to the Fuller Project. Eva Rodriguez is the editor in chief, and I have I didn't hear back from her. I don't think I heard back from her. I have to go back and check. I don't I'll think I did. I have to um, go back and look at my notes and see if I could find the military person because it was an yeah, interesting well, we have, publication. We have we have someone from the Military Times. That's one of our eight editors in October because they're in DC. So we've got someone from there. They're very excited to do it. So, um, and then they sent me. Uh, they sent. Um, focus nola <laughs> sorry she's getting ready to compete right now um uh, they, oh great throw nola <laughs> sorry okay sorry she just did the discus um anyway so i i think <laughs> and she's so little she's like the tiniest person ever and she's out here throwing the discus um so anyway, she, uh, the military times people sent me a job, they need someone in the Middle East. So I posted it on our Facebook page and then I sent it over to the international community too. And, you know, hopefully that can be an ongoing relationship. They have several publications like military times yeah. is one of maybe 10 or something. So. I think that would be ideal for June and it's, it's both close enough and far enough from 
yeah. the convention that it would be a good selling point for people to come to yeah. the conference session. It's a good yep. piece here. Yeah. It's and really I think cool. we can discuss when we get closer if we give, we probably would, but give give um, attendees access to the air table with contacts, not just the air table, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's something we can discuss. Is that something we would do, uh, you know, for, for people? I guess that's an incentive. Like if you register, we'll give you access to this. Not quite well, so threatening. The other thing to keep in mind too is that I doubt there would be a lot of difference. The reason I think this would fit well into an hour, they're not going to have a lot of wildly different angles on what freelancers should or should not do. Right. And I agree. Especially yeah. if the state cider people already have some kind of a document, we could yep. see if they would be willing to share that with people who attend. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I and mean, I mean, I think I would go a little bit longer than an hour. Certainly not I, like an hour and 15. I think just to give us a little bit of cushion, any technical stuff in the beginning. You know what I mean? Um, I, I would. Yeah, but the actual the actual program, the actual time commitment from the speakers, I think oh, yeah. would work at an hour. The structure would work for an hour. I think, yeah. And my, um, I think what I did, the way that I set up the resume event is that I told people it would start promptly at the top of the hour. And so I encouraged them to join the waiting room in advance. And that then right. at the top of the hour, I just, and then this, you know, the speakers and board members, like I let everybody, I let us in, in advance so that we could make sure all of our ducks were in a row. Then at the top of the hour, like I just let everybody in all at once. And then that way we just launched right away. Yeah. So the technical issues, like were any technical issues were worked out in advance. And we did keep it to an hour. And then I think that I booked it for an extra, if I recall, I booked it for an extra half hour. Um, that sounds right. To absorb any overflow. Um, but I just, I really feel like it's respectful of the speakers and the attendees and each other within this group to be as tight as you know as tight on the time as possible um you know it by which i mean just strictly adhering to a yeah. time schedule as possible and also i just feel like it reflects better on us as an organization when we do that because i know that when i attend events and they run you know they run on time it just it just reflects better on the organization yep. Um, speaking of time, I'm going to have to take off because I've got to be someplace at 530 and I need to leave early to cope with rush hour traffic. So I will see you guys soon. Hazel and Hillary, I sent you a note with my availability for the next couple, the next two weeks so we can talk about the process for the how to update whenever is good for the two of you. Super. Thank you so much, Ruth. And drive safely or... <laughs> bus safely however you're oh, no no through. oh god no i wouldn't take a bus these days if you paid me okay thanks <laughs> all right. all right. i have a purple yeah. car why do i need a bus <laughs> see ya um is there any i i feel like that um i guess the other thing that we were talking about was who would make a good potential partner for um hosting a big debate on the um IRS versus ABC test. So do we want to maybe take five minutes and just bat that around? Um, sure, I think I'm not really familiar with who would be. We talked about it a little bit at the last meeting, Solomon, and I had been thinking National Press Club, but then other people who are more familiar with National Press Club, we're not sure that that would actually make a lot of sense, partly because of restrictions on the space. Um, I mean, ASJA makes sense just because it's made up entirely of freelancers. But ASJA already is has involved in a lot of in that. Yeah. So, so I, or yeah. you look at like, an ABJ or an AHJ or something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think I would, I don't know if there's a way to find out who has like more freelancers. 
I know NAHJ has a lot of freelancers. I don't know how that number compares to. NABJ has a lot of freelancers. Do they? Yeah. They actually had a, a editor's thing for freelancers a year before last where they had um, editors come and talk similar to what we're talking about doing here. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't, yeah. I, I would say one of those groups um, because we're not necessarily presenting it with a political stance because of doing kind of the perspective of both. Um, Are we so off the record yeah. here now? I don't know. No, we're recording. Okay. Um, there was recently, if my memory serves, the DC freelancers were going to be meeting soon. Was there maybe a conversation about broaching the subject with the DC freelancers to see if anybody there had any good ideas? <laughs> Hazel doesn't need to unmute herself. She just answered. That was. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, okay, well, let's, like, do we want to team up with another group or are, do you want to team up with another, um, um, chap or a chapter? Hmm. That's an interesting thought. Yay. And so I think you would get a yes from the DC chapter. Because it, it, it might be a way to, ex <laughs> to ex we're taking over, don't tell them. Um, it <laughs> might be a way to expand our visibility within the organization. Um, and it, it could be something we could also do in the future of like a team with this chapter on this thing and team with this chapter on this thing. I'm not opposed to that idea, but I also like the idea. I personally am more partial and I can be talked out of this, you know, always, but I'm more interested in the idea of expanding the visibility outside of SPJ and the, and the visibility of this issue specifically outside of SPJ and more broadly within the journalism community. Because I find SPJ to be rather insular. So um, I'm I, interested yeah. in this issue like as a broader advocacy issue, not so much like raising our profile within the organization. I feel like we've been doing a lot of that and doing it pretty well. I would say either NABJ or NAHJ and I mean, you also have the photogra press photographers, but they're involved in the lawsuit against AB5. So mm -hmm. ASJ and the NP, is it MPAA MPA. or MPPA? MPPA. Um, they're the ones involved in the lawsuit. That, so this, um, so far we haven't heard anything from the Supreme Court as far as whether it will hear that lawsuit. They gave the state of California 30 days to respond to the, the, the attorney general of California 30 days to respond to their request, which is an indication that they may be interested in hearing it. Okay. Um, but we haven't heard anything since. Um, but those two groups are involved in the lawsuit. So they would, um, they have, it, yeah, they're, those two groups are against AB5 because they've seen it destroy careers. Yeah. Um, but in a HJ and in a BJ, I don't know. I don't know if chapters have ever teamed with them before, but at least those are groups that we've interacted with at shared conferences, you know, like when they used to. And I mean, I love the idea of partnering with them on, you know, on anything. Um, yeah, I would say pick one of the, like, let's or pick. both. Yeah. Wouldn't both yeah. be cool? Why pick one? Right. So I'm sorry, you're talking about the greater organization, right? Not like local chapters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know that um, individual chapters have partnered with other, with both um, NAHJ, I think NAHJ, and definitely NABJ, because Ruth's chapter, Ruth um, 
Ruth Tyler Carter's chapter has, um, which is Elizabeth Donald's chapter, sorry. I think Elizabeth's the, the president. Um, yeah. Anyway, they've, they've uh, done some joint stuff together. Mm -hmm. um, Does anybody know if an ABJLA isn't, like I, I don't know a lot about this lawsuit. Um, is an ABJLA involved in that? Does anybody know? I don't know. In the AB5 lawsuit? Yeah. No, I don't think so. It's, AS, it's ASJA and MPA. And MPPA. MPPA. Um, are the two things, uh, the two organizations involved in the lawsuit. And NABJ, NABJLA didn't write an amicus brief or anything like that? Not that I am aware of. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's um, let's keep working on it. It's five thirty-one. So speaking of being respectful of people's time and uh, running a tight schedule, um, I would like to wrap up. But maybe um, let's... like Re Rebecca might have contacts at NH NAHJ. I was going to say yeah. NABJ would be likely, might be likely to to deal with you directly, and it's very NABJLA is very large. Yeah, no, I'm sure we could. I'm sure we could get contacts at both, and I'm sure that Rebecca would be helpful with that. I think so. Um, okay, so are we deciding that that's the direction we're going to go, or are we thinking about it? Are we brainstorming more? I think NABJ and NA. Um, HJ, since they are holding their um, their convention together jointly this year, mm -hmm. I think reaching out to both of them would be better. Would be a good way to go. Plus, they're a lot more. They they're new. Well, they had it's not completely new, but their their local chapters, the LA chapter, um, are really influential in the chapters overall, and they're kind of setting us a, a new standard and being a little bit more outspoken about um, journalistic journalist protections and stuff okay because like right now they're they're um talking about the sheriff's um behavior <laughs> the abj la yeah yeah the la sheriff um is a hater apparently and uh, he's got a hate and uh so he's trying to he was he was trying to uh what do you try to he threatened to arrest someone or something he had a whole whole speech about it and he called out a journalist and talked about investigating a journalist and they responded immediately really quick so but yeah i'm looking at their site i don't see anything about the um the bill or the lawsuit so they might be a good place to go okay um all right i will draft a correspondence and run it by you all. Okay. And we're going to the larger chapter, right? No, no, going to national. Yeah, the national, I'm sorry, national, going to national. Yeah. Well, let me suggest that you um, talk it over with Rebecca yeah. rather than just ask her for contacts, you know, tell her that we would like to do this. No, I'll definitely do that. And I will actually um, invite her to, you know, <clears throat> no, I would totally, I would totally do that. I would just want to have something drafted so that if she wanted to be the conduit, then I would provide the draft to her rather than asking her to do the legwork. Good idea. Yeah. Good idea. Um, when is our next meeting? So according to my records, Today being the whatever, then June, June 8th, second okay. Wednesday of June. Okay. Because I'm going to be gone for um, most of the month of June. <laughs> um, I'm not going. Be... What are you doing? I am taking a road trip to Should North we... Dakota. Should we conclude Ooh. the official um, business? Sure. Of the business? I, I think, yeah. Should we I, I conclude we, the business of the food? Yeah, All right. let's, let's not record that. Let's okay, start. yeah. Stop. Thank you, everybody. This concludes the May meeting of the SPJ Freelance Community.